what I've heard often from many of you is that you are just feeling pretty overwhelmed lately. And we have many inspiring quotations about never giving up, about how great things are accomplished by people who keep working even when it seems hopeless. We have Churchill saying, never give up, never, ever give up. We have Anne Lamott saying, just take it bird by bird, don't give up. Our sixth principle is overwhelming, like that taken at its face. It says that we as Unitarian Universalists agree to affirm, which means say yes to, and promote, which means get a lot of other people to start talking about it, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. For all. I like to bring our principles home by saying at the end of each one, beginning in our homes and congregations, but you all know that peace, liberty, and justice for all, even in your house, is kind of overwhelming. <laughs> and I think this used to be the last principle. We used to only have six. And um, it felt to me reading this one that the people writing the principles, we're moving right now to a new house, another house. And you know when you're moving, this has to do with this, trust me. When you're moving, um, the first loads are very well organized. And <laughs> you have boxes like this should be open first, and this goes into this room, and that goes into that room. And by the end, you're just like, ah, oh, just get a big box and throw everything in. I feel like this principle is like that. They got to the end, and they were just like, everything, everything goes in here. Peace, liberty, justice for all, for everybody in the world. <laughs> and it reminds me of a short film that you can find on YouTube called, it's on the uh, church's Facebook page, the link. It's called The Man Who Ate a Car. Now, I do not think it's a documentary. I think it's just for fun. But it's this guy, he looks about 40 years old, he's a California guy, and he's standing in his kitchen. And he says, you know, a car is just the sum of its parts. And the parts are usually not that big. I mean, just a, a couple inches across. 75% of the parts on an automobile are the size of an Oreo cookie. He says, you can eat that. And the ones that are too big, we just machine them down, smooth them out. Most of us uh, set goals for ourselves. We don't have time for things like car eating because we're, we're making a living and we're raising kids and we're helping our parents and we're keeping doctor's appointments and we're going to classes and we're trying to um, keep our balance in a world that seems to be going wah, um, almost all the time. And it's, it's hard, but it's important to us to find energy to make the world a better place. And our forebearer, Ralph Waldo Emerson, said, a successful life is to leave the world a little bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know that even one life has breathed easier because you live. And so I know a lot of you now, and I know that there are serious jobs being done amongst us to make the world a better place. I know people are breathing easier because you live and because we are here as a congregation in Austin. People are breathing easier. And we think about our job of world peace and justice and liberty and we feel sometimes like we have to write a report by tomorrow that's supposed to have been done three months ago. And we're, we listen to our forebearer, Emerson, say, oh, we're a redeemed social condition. And it was like, just one? Uh, 
there used to be a bed and breakfast right near Unitarian headquarters on Beacon Hill, and each room was named after a famous Unitarian, so you could brush your teeth in the mirror and read about somebody who had such a better life than you <laughs> in terms of doing justice. And you read like, here's Horace Mann who organized the public uh, education system. Um, here's Clara Barton, the universalist who founded the Red Cross. Here's uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, led by his liberal faith to a more inclusive interpretation of the law. Here's Thomas Starr King, after whom our seminary in Berkeley is named, inspired to fight the California legislature for continued land rights of Mexicans. Here's Jane Hull, the f pretty much the founder of social work, and Hull House. Um, he, Roger Baldwin, who founded you know, the ACLU, and you think, wow, I'm trying to think of a social condition that I can just redeem with one lifetime. Um, and we do social action, and we do art, and we do political action, and we run for office, and we make phone calls, and we type, uh, by type I mean on the computer, letters, and we in the ordinary course of our lives find time to do some of these things and yet usually we feel inadequate and what we're forgetting is that the entire principle of making the world a better place does not rest upon our shoulders alone. That the universe counts on this huge team of people who are thinking along the same lines with this goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Number one, we have hundreds of thousands of Unitarian Universalists across the world, and we're all working on it together. You're on this enormous team that maybe you didn't even know, but we're starting to get the t-shirts. You know, we're starting to get the team t-shirts, the yellow ones that we wear to, to um, actions in public, and so you can tell the Unitarians most of us are making the world a better place just in tiny little daily ways by loving our family members, by speaking the truth in love, by teaching our children how to be kind and joyful and useful and loving and honest and wise. We are trying to pass along our values. We care for our grandchildren. We cook for people. We visit when they're in trouble. And those actions bring about world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. And if we get frustrated because we never get finished, if we get frustrated because our sixth principle is sitting out there in the driveway like an enormous car that's waiting to be worked on or eaten, and um, you think, well, that almost seems easy compared to the world, peace, and justice, and liberty for all. But it's okay because the guy in the movie says, uh, this is a long-term activity. <laughs> Look, it took five years. I ate my first two lug nuts on December 30th, 1990. <laughs> Finished the last piece of clutch housing <laughs> on February 14th, 1995. Our principle says our goal is world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all, tells us that we are not America first people. We are called to be <laughs> world people. We are called to be global people, globalists. When they talk about globalists, that's us. Because we want to think about the entire world. We want things to be good for people all over the world, not just us. Other hearts are beating in other lands. Other skies in other lands are as blue as ours. People love their country and they want justice and peace too, the way we do. So we hold the global situation in mind. As difficult as that is and as overwhelming as that is, we are not allowed to say, mm, my family and I are fine, my people are fine, too bad about yours, you're on your own. That is not what we are called to do. Now, it's a huge goal and it's overwhelming and it burns us out sometimes because we are thinking about it wrong. We're thinking we have to finish it, but all we have to do is continue it. Other people started it. We are just continuing as part of the team. And when we get tired, we can rest because it doesn't all land on our shoulders. 
And when we feel ourselves starting to burn out, we can fall back from the forefront of the action and allow other people to move forward. They're called forward. We fall back for a little while. We go <sighs> and get ourselves back together, build up our uh, emotional cushion again, fill up our souls by doing the things that nourish us, and then we can start um, doing the work again. And everybody knows <laughs> when you're setting goals, you can have a huge goal, but what you're supposed to do is break it into small pieces the size of an Oreo cookie. And you're supposed to do things a little bit, you're supposed to do them in order. That never worked for me. Um, but small pieces, yes. And you're supposed to make goals which are tangible. In other words, you don't say, I'm going to become a force for good like Barbara Jordan. Because how do you know whether you're there or not? So you say, I am going to write a check to my candidate that I appreciate uh, their views. I'm going to vote for them and work for them to get into office. Or I'm going to run for office myself. Or I'm going to make four phone calls a week and try to be as much of a nuisance as the indivisible folks say we should be in order to get the job done of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. You don't say, I'm going to be a millionaire. You say, I'm going to save this certain amount every month because the tangible goals where you can say, did I do it or did I not do it? A lot of people want to be writers, and Anne Lamott is a good writer to read, so is Stephen King on writing. Um, if you want to be a writer, because Anne Lamott and Stephen King both say, you just put your bottom in the seat and write. If you want to be a writer, what you have to do is write. And then you can say, did I sit down today and write my five pages, even if it's just, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to write, I have no idea what to write. <laughs> Either yes, I did, or no, I didn't tangible goals that you can say yes or no, did I do it or not, and attainable goals. You can sit in a seat and write five pages. So most of us are doing that already. We are part of the struggle, and many of us understand that the struggle is not going to be over. We're not going to fix things. Even Jane Hull, who founded Hull House and made social work a profession, that didn't fix everything. We still have to have social workers, and they still get overwhelmed because there's too much to do and underpaid, and that's a whole other sermon. So one good purpose that's served by an extra-large goal is that it serves as a, a measuring stick where you can say, um, this decision, does this get us toward peace, liberty, and justice for all in this congregation or in this world, or does it not? It's just a, a measure for us. And if we're human, we're going to make mistakes. You're going to say something stupid and sexist or racist. You're going to say something um, that is a throwback to the way you were raised or the deep down non-globalist part of yourself, you're going to say, and when somebody says, hey, that was sexist, you just, you don't have, it's not an attack on your very being. You just can say, oh gosh, I see how you could uh, see that. My bad. Sorry. And you just move on. You move on because we're going to make mistakes and you got to, in a goal that big, you have to make room for mistakes. Does that make sense? doesn't mean you're a terrible person means you're a human person, which is a pain. <laughs> but nobody gets to not be a human person unless you're a four-legged and then you have your own problems. <laughs> so let's take our sixth principle just a little by little. And you look at your home, your work, your church. You focus on two things. That's our... That's what we're asked to do. Focus on two things. I mean, that's what we're asked to do. That's what I'm asking you to do. So you don't get overwhelmed. And just get it to the shape of an Oreo cookie. If you don't like Oreos, I don't. Just think about the shape of one of those like cheeses that's covered in red wax. I like those. <laughs> so make it that size, then you can work on that. And then we'll, we'll eventually get there. We won't be here when we get there. 
but we know what it looks like because you know what? People have been thinking about this for a long time and they've been thinking about what does a world look like with peace, liberty, and justice for all? Can you picture it? If you can't picture it right now, what I suggest is that you look up the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It was voted on by all the nations in the UN, including us, 1948. 48. They had just been through a terrible experience. And they had a really clear idea because those values had been under attack. But if you look it up and try to print it out, it's going to be eight pages of this, 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 very clearly setting out what does a world look like with peace, liberty, and justice for all. This is what it looks like. Okay, this is our agenda. There was a viral meme that went around, I don't know if you saw it, but had a woman uh, in a burqa sitting on a subway next to a drag queen sitting on a subway, and they were just minding their own business. Um, and the meme went around in the right wing uh, circles. It said, this is the liberals' idea of the future. Drag queens and burkas. And all the liberals sent it around too, and they were like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two people on the subway minding their own business <laughs> together. That's, that's a good view. Peace, liberty, and justice for all. May it be so.